Hello, everyone. My name is Mackenzie. I am the founder of Mackenzie's Mission, and I'm here to talk to you about our educational initiative, the Amyloidosis Speakers Bureau. So our mission is to educate the medical community about amyloidosis, and we do this specifically through patient stories. And we believe this is not only going to contribute to an earlier diagnosis, but also going to lead to improved outcomes for patients. Our vision is very simple. It's one where we've worked ourselves out of a job. In this world, amyloidosis is widely recognized. The disease is diagnosed quickly, correctly, and treatment can begin right away. In this world, there's no need for a speaker's bureau. The challenge is one that is quite significant. We know amyloidosis is a rare disease. It's complex, multi-systemic, and there's a significant widespread lack of awareness surrounding the disease. Um, and of course, this leads to not only misdiagnosing the disease, but also the underdiagnosing of the disease. It's not uncommon that we hear from our speakers that it took them multiple years and multiple doctors in order to finally arrive at a correct diagnosis. Um, and all the while the disease is progressing in the background. Um, so there really is a need for an earlier diagnosis, uh, especially to put these new and exciting treatments that are coming um, to get them to patients. Our response to the challenge is the Speakers Bureau. So we present to medical students and residents across the United States we educate them through patient stories, as well as an educational video and monthly mailings. So this initiative raises awareness across thousands of future doctors who are going to go on and see countless patients over the course of their careers. So the multiplier effect here is quite significant. Um, and ultimately, our goal is earlier detection and better survival rates for patients. So why medical students and residents? Um, this was something that was very uh, thoughtful, very specific why we chose this population. And the thing about this population is they're first and second year medical students and they haven't chosen a specialty yet. And that's important because as I mentioned, amyloidosis can affect virtually any organ system. So patients could present to a hematologist, they could present to their PCP. Um, nephrologist, cardiologist, so on and so forth. So by having a room full of um, future doctors who are gonna go on to every specialty, we're really able to cast a wide net in our awareness. Um, and that's really important. Uh, medical schools typically do touch on amyloidosis. It's, it's not significant, but there is some introduction to the disease in their education. So to be able to provide an emotional complement to what they're learning in the classroom really helps these students to just kind of to, to, to lock it away in the back of their mind. And you know, five, 10 years down the road, when they come across a, a patient um, that doesn't quite make sense, maybe they'll, they'll think about amyloidosis. As for the residency programs, we are specifically um, working with internal medicine residency programs. And that's also uh, important because a lot of the times patients do present to their, to their primary care, to internal medicine. So being able to educate sort of the front line, so to speak, um, about the disease is important. I touched upon this a bit earlier, but the potential impact of the Speakers Bureau is quite significant. So as for the numbers, there are roughly 170 medical schools across the United States, averaging around 100 medical students per class, meaning that the Amyloidosis Speakers Bureau has the potential to educate over 17,000 future doctors every year. As for the residency programs, there are over 580 internal medicine residency programs across the country, averaging around 20 residents per program, meaning the ASB has the potential to educate almost 12,000 new doctors every year. We founded the Speakers Bureau back in 2019, and since then, we've given over 215 presentations to medical students and residents, and that has totaled more than 10,000 attendees. 
So our report card is what these attendees are saying about the experience. Um, and that's really kind of what, what helps us figure out how we're doing. And I, I think these, these two quotes are really powerful. I'll read them to you. The first is, the speaker's ability to put a face and an experience behind a disease is so much stronger than a textbook will ever be. I will now be much more likely to appropriately add amyloidosis to a differential diagnosis moving forward in my clinical rotations and career. <clears throat> the second student says, this presentation was a wonderful supplement to my medical education because it brought amyloidosis to life and reminded me that there are actual people behind these devastating diseases. During the second year of medical school, it can seem very disconnected and abstract to study disease after disease and memorize the clinical presentations, treatments, and prognoses. It is refreshing to hear from an actual patient and be reminded of why we're in medical school. So these two medical students, you know, these are just two examples of thousands of, of testimonials that we have that are just like this. Interestingly, in 2021, we were wondering, does the Amyloidosis Speakers Bureau make a difference? Are we making an impact on these students? So we decided to conduct a study. With the help of Dr. Sanchor Walla, we conducted a study to evaluate the influence of the ASB, the patient narratives, on the medical students' knowledge, attitudes, and behavioral intent. Um, and in conclusion, it's really powerful. The ASB educators widened awareness of an underdiagnosed disease. The data indicated a higher mean difference on all measures, including the medical student's desire to one, improve communication with their patients, two, acquire and apply knowledge of amyloidosis, and three, reconsider diagnosing when the symptoms are puzzling. And then to close, here's a quote from Dr. Gordon Huggins. He is a cardiologist and a associate professor at Tufts University School of Medicine. And he says, the ASB has the potential to significantly alter the course of this disease. So thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to visit our website down below. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to answer answer any questions you have. Thank you.